Hello, hello, and welcome to a rather windy Southampton boat show where we are here with Pardo Yachts, courtesy of Argo Yachting, to have a look at this newly launched 60 Endurance. What an impressive boat. Starters, you've got the reverse sheer bow, and I don't know how well you can see here, but there's a little cutout section there for the anchor. We'll have a look at that when we're on board. But it has a really, really high freeboard. If I come and stand alongside it and give you an example of how high that freeboard is, it's massive. Incredible reverse sheer windscreen, again, which we'll have a look at when we're on board. So yeah, let's, let's jump on on board. It's the first time I've seen one of these, so it's quite impressive. It is busy, we are at a boat show, so we will have to dart our way around the place. But we'll start on the bathing platform, which you can see here is absolutely vast. You can easily fit a decent sized tender on that. It is hydraulic high-low, so it does go up and down. And also you'll notice on the back here, you can see the crew cabin door. Because this can be, at this size, it, could, it can easily be owner operated, but equally, you might want to put some crew on board. So down in here, we have a couple of berths, one facing that way, one facing that way, and then they've got their own little wet room in here, which then leads through here to the engine room, which because it's a boat show, we're not supposed to go into, but we'll have a quick peek. A couple of Volvo Penta IPS I believe these are 800 horsepower engines, but I'll drop the details down in below. But it, even in the engine room, there's decent headroom. And then you've got a generator down here, but I'll drop all the details in below for the engine. So neat little crew cabin there, but again, you can have it as storage if you want. You also got all the controls down here for the passerelle and the high-low bathing platform. I don't really miss it, to be honest. I drink less nowadays. Yeah. Oh, it's <laughs> typical Southampton boat show. It's now starting to rain and everyone's going to run indoors. So we'll leg it around the outside decks first. And as I mentioned, really high side bulwarks, which makes it really easy to walk around. Pop-up cleats, midships, and then a lovely grab rail that runs the whole way through. And you've also got these little eye cleats here so you can pop your fenders over the side. Fantastic inset runners there for the lines, big cleats. And when we looked outside at the outside of the hull, you could see the way that this anchor pops through that hole. Self-launching anchor, really, really neat. And then you've got an awful lot of space, tons of space down there to store fenders. In fact, you can see that there's one down there and ropes and lines and, you know, pretty much anything you want. You could probably stick a paddle board in there if you wanted. Just lock that up. If I sit up here and take a step back, you can see the presence that that forward windscreen has. Just impressive. Big, big little sun lounges up here. Massive sun lounge, in fact, covering the whole coach roof. And there's a little pop-up seat here. And I'm guessing, but I don't know, I suspect you could put a little table in there as well if you wanted. And the other unique feature about this boat, apart from the fact that it has a side door, which we'll look at from inside, is it has double side folding decks. So both the side decks fold down out the way. That's going to give you an extra two meters of beam, which makes this a fantastic party platform. Obviously all the guard rails here will pop out and then you've got your bollards here for winching yourself into and your stern mooring and then some really lovely fair leads in here and decent sized cleats. Obviously this seating area here that we're looking at now, as you can see, pops up or folds down whether you want to seat for dining or for sunbathing and you can see the windows in here which are putting some light down into the aft cabin. Truly impressive solid teak table there that's then on hydraulic legs and also splits and folds so you can make it larger or smaller depending on your dining requirements. If I just spin myself around here you'll be able to see that folded side deck in its up position and as there's a few people inside we will pop up onto the flybridge where nobody is because it's raining <laughs> but we still got protection because you've got this 
electrically operated sun awning which is quite neat as well because it comes you come with little lights in it as well plenty of deck space at the back there for your choice of furniture in this instance it's set out for yoga another folding teak table and acres acres of sun lounging space up here And interesting, there's a bit of storage space for whatever you fancy, a teak laid in front of the windscreen there. Upstairs helm station. Just in here. So twin throttle controllers, two glass bridge screens from Garmin, IPS joystick controller, and bow thruster. Pretty standard navigation seat there. And a couple of fridges, so there's one under there, there's a second fridge under there and this seat flop flips either way so you can have it as a helm seat as we've got it now or you can grab hold of it slide it across and turn it into a additional sun lounger so let's go and have a quick peek inside so here we go what a beautiful interior I'm just going to take a couple of steps forward because there's a few people around. So what they term galley aft, which means the galley's in the back of the boat, so you can then feed and water all the people in the back of the boat. And that's split on this side, you've got storage, cooker, glass hob, and then you've got your sinks and fridges on that side. You'll notice here there's a pop-up window and the doors slide to the side. And also both of the side windows here. So this window here and the one on that side pop open as it is at the moment one small step up here takes you to the saloon area big set of c-shaped seating around here again big glass window another hydraulic table which can fold up or down depending on whether you want it for dining or entertaining and then there's a fridge wine fridge there wine storage I don't know what's in here actually. It's like a, uh, ice maker in there. A bit further forward takes us to the helm station where you can now see you've got access to that side door. So you can exit the side door straight out onto the side deck where you've got, it's folded down, but you've got a midships cleat there. Really stylish helm seat. And you'll notice this bolster then flops forwards. He says like so, so you can fold it down for standing if you want to, and you can equally adjust the steering wheel here, up or down depending on whether you're standing or seated, and then you've pretty much got a repeat of upstairs really, slightly bigger screens, throttle controllers, joystick, bow thruster, so really, really clean dash layout. But the interesting thing here is, look at that view forwards, so that massive single piece windscreen with the side inset quarter lights and the bigger panels on the side really really light and airy in here so a few steps down takes us into the accommodation area which is really again really cleverly designed layout so we're going to go all the way forward first which takes us to the vip which is pretty impressive in its own right nice bit of lighting tons and tons of headroom again so i'm just over one meter seven and there's plenty of headroom in there a bit of light coming through the deck windows and then you've got hull windows here as well, which are letting the light in. Storage on both sides. So wardrobe in there. Same on the other side there as well. But what's quite nice with this one is it has its own heads. So standard loo, shower there, which again, pretty clever. The shower doors fold in on themselves. Really stylish sink and the usual bit of uh, vanity unit here with storage behind it lovely corian molded sink there so that is the forward vip ensuite take a couple of steps back and we come to the shared heads which again has similar similar shower layout with an opening door sink vanity unit and behind us here is the loo that then has a Jack and Jill door, which takes us into the twin cabin here, with a pretty standard double bed layout. 
I'm pretty sure you could put an infill in there if you wanted to. It's quite nice again because there's a step down in here which just gives you really, really insane headroom. So there you go. I can just touch the ceiling. And then if I spin the camera around and pull the door to here, you can then see there's access to the shared heads with the cabin entrance through there. So really nice double cabin. So that's cabin number three effectively. And if we go across the hall, we get into cabin number one, which is a master. Really nice as an entry port here, and then you go into the heads. Another one of those really stylish molded sinks. Mirrored storage right the way through. And then again, another slightly larger, slightly bigger, again, vast headroom in here because of those big side to deck superstructures. So come out of the master heads, past the washer dryer and you then come into the master cabin which is truly incredible look at that super sized bed with storage underneath and that beautiful effect with the lighting that makes the whole cabin look like it's floating storage on both sides natural light sweeping in through those hull windows lovely little bedside units bedside lights as well and the same on the other side all of that chest of drawers unit there and the leatherette pictures at the back there are all storage little vanity unit there a bit more storage there and a very large double wardrobe in here we passed on the way in and the real joy of this boat is the fact that it's slightly multi-purpose so the idea being, and I'm going to head back outside for this, so bear with us. So there you go. So we will just jump off the back here. As I mentioned, we had a quick look at the engine bay, but the really interesting about this boat is the fact that if you want to cruise, you can cruise at 16, 18 knots, no problem at all. You'll max out at around about 22 knots. But the really interesting thing is if you want to sit at around seven, seven and a half knots, that's going to give you 960 nautical miles. So there you go. I hope you've enjoyed that. Do please like and subscribe. Thank you very much to Argo Yachting and Pardo Yachts for letting us have a look around this quite impressive Endurance 60. See you next time around. Thanks for watching.